morning, Breakfast Club. Good morning to everybody joining us on YouTube uh, this week. Uh, today is day 79 it, of our reading through the New Testament uh, of day 90. We are, we are really getting close, aren't we? Tuesday, August the 27th, 2024. John chapter 19 through 21 is our reading today. John 19 through 21, finishing the Gospel of John. John 21, 20 to 23 is where we're going to land. And the title of the devotion today is M-Y-O-B, You Follow Me. You like how that rhymes? M-Y-O-B, You Follow Me. Mind your own business, man. You follow me. That's what Jesus told Peter. So anyway, uh, you want to tell everybody where we are and what we're doing? So today you, we are waking up in Ocean K for day two. We are on the ship. And uh, last night we spent the night in Ocean K. And um, we're waking up this morning here. So yeah. as soon as this is over, this is recorded. So as soon as this is over, we are going to try to go live. So stay tuned right after so that we can go live and yeah. visit with you for a few awesome. minutes. Um, if we can. We didn't yeah. want to take the chance that we weren't able to do Breakfast Club. So we pre-recorded. Um, but afterwards, we're going to try to go yeah. live. We have a balcony, so we're going to want to show you everything yeah, that's going on. <laughs> yeah, man, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, hopefully we can do that. Uh, but yeah. we thought that we wanted to, we didn't want to skip any days of the Breakfast Club because we know how important the, getting into the Bible and spending time together in community is for our own spiritual growth. And so yeah. we're doing this uh, in advance, but with the recognition that we're going to be together. Amen? All right, so. Uh, chapter 19 to 21 of John. Chapter 19 talked about the crucifixion and burial. Man, what a tough, what a tough passage. Uh, I don't know about you, but reading through that is just absolutely, uh, it's heart-wrenching. It really is. Verse chapter 20, though, we come and very quickly get to the empty tomb. That, that despair is met with uh, just excitement, enthusiasm, empty tomb, resurrection appearances of Jesus. Uh, chapter 21, which is where we're going to be today, uh, really does cover the re post-resurrection appearances, especially the one uh, that uh, we have on the seashore of the northeast seashore of the Sea of Galilee. Uh, the place is called Mensi Christi. Uh, mm -hmm. Today, if you were to visit Israel, it would be called Mensi Christi, and that is the table of Christ. And so uh, today, uh, if you go to this place, uh, it, there's a Catholic church that's located on the northeast shore of the Sea of Galilee, which contains a large rectangular block of limestone that according to tradition, tradition doesn't mean it's fact, tradition, right, served as a table when Jesus prepared breakfast for his disciples in a post-resurrection appearance. This event is where Jesus restored Peter three times. Jesus feed my sheep, Jesus feed my sheep. You read it, John chapter 21. Uh, as the passage ends, though, as Jesus gets done saying that and as he's ending that uh, restoration of Peter, uh, he signals to Peter how he will die for him as he commits his life to feeding the sheep. Jesus has simple instruction for Peter, says, follow me. And then, Mr. Insecurity, Peter looks around and says, what about that guy? <laughs> what about that guy? You know, what about him? Okay, you call me to do this, but what about him? Is he going to have to do it too? I mean, you, you just kind of hear Peter's insecurity pop up about this and you know what let's not give peter a hard time because we is the same way okay let's read verse 20 through 22 real quick peter turning around saw the disciple whom jesus loved following them the one who also had leaned back on his bosom at the supper and said lord who is the one who betrays you so you peter seeing him said to jesus lord and what about this man Jesus said to him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Bam, right? So Jesus is looking right at him, okay? Verse 21, Peter says, What about this man? Peter's first response was not to tell Jesus, Yes, uh, I'll follow you. I'll die the way that you say you're going to die. I I'll live for you and I'll die for you, right? But turning around, he looked at the other disciple, John, right? So Peter First response, the personal challenge from Jesus was to deflect it by wondering what Jesus wanted to do regarding someone else. Man, come on, Peter. Come on. You just got restored three times. It, it cancels out the, the doubting, right? It cancels out the denial. Now you've been restored three times. The first thing you're going to do, <laughs> uh, 
You know what, though? We can't give Peter much of a hard time. How many times, seriously, y'all, how many times do we do the same thing when Jesus asks us to go, to do, to give, to serve? What do we do? We say, well, what about them? Right? Jesus taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, I want you to give uh, to this cause. Well, what about them? Why aren't they doing it? Why, why aren't they doing what, what you're calling me to do? We always do this, right? Uh, we always do this in different ways. Well, what about them? Unfortunate truth here is that Peter represents most of us. We find it easy to deflect any personal challenge from Jesus by wondering and even worrying about what other disciples are doing or what Jesus may require from them. Why do we do that? Why, that is in our nature to compete and compare to other people and then to justify our bad behavior or our bad attitude based upon the, the maybe the, the treatment that Jesus has given to others, right? Jesus says, look, what I do with him, it ain't none of your business. Mind your own business, Jack. You follow me, right? This is what I'm calling you to do. You keep your eyes on me. You follow me and don't worry about what I call him to do, right? Come on, man. This is this is like right in our grill today. Verse 22, Jesus said, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you, right? And we just go like this. What is, and we put the head shaking and everything else. What is that to you? Now, I'm not sure Jesus did that. I know I'd do it, okay? I'm not sure Jesus would, would have that kind of attitude. But you can almost hear what Jesus is saying here, right? Jesus is saying, look, I have a plan and purpose for each one of you, right? And his plan and his purpose ain't your plan and your purpose. So focus on what I'm calling you to do and what I call on him to do, you don't worry about. Okay, there you go. Uh, great question for all of us to consider, right? What is this to you? We have a personal call and commission to follow Jesus, each one of us. We walk across that threshold of faith. We have, we have eternal life. We have a life with Christ. We're following him. Now, we're, we're, that's who we keep our eyes on, not other people because we get in trouble when we put our eyes on other people. Amen. The, this means that we go where Jesus wants us to go and do what Jesus wants us to do. So what should it matter to us if Jesus is telling someone else to go somewhere else to do something else? If he's calling someone else to go somewhere else to do something else, what is that to you? What is that to me? Right? Jesus is at work in each one of our lives calling us to follow him. Here's, here's where my ponder point comes in. That the enemy to God's mission, the enemy to, to the mission of Jesus, to the gospel advancement. You know what the, who the enemy is? The enemy is us. Most of the time, the enemy is just plain old us because we can't get out of our own way. This is what we see in Peter here. We get so distracted by competing and comparing that we forget about or lose interest in what the Lord has called us to do. So the simple solution to this, follow me. The simple solution follow me. Keep your eyes on me. Keep moving down the journey I've called you to, right? Verse 22, that's exactly what Jesus says. You follow me. You follow me. This was a powerful and pointed challenge to Peter. Without regard to how Jesus might deal with John or other disciples, Peter had to decide for himself whether or not he would follow Jesus. We have that same decision to make. It's a challenge for every one of uh, Jesus' disciples, right? Uh, Merrill Tenney, who is one of the commentators that I read, he said the use of the second person pronoun in Jesus' command makes the statement emphatic. You must follow me. It's exactly what Jesus is saying to Peter, and it's what he's saying to us. Don't worry about anything else or anyone else. You must follow me. Hello? All right. Spurgeon said it like this. Drop a Spurgeon nugget. He said, I have come to the conclusion that instead of trying to set all my master servants right at once... <laughs> I love how Spurgeon said that. My first and most important work is to follow my Lord. And I think, my brother, that it will be wise for you to come to the same conclusion. What, 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 what did Spurgeon say? He said, you know, <coughs> instead of me thinking about what everybody else is doing, I think what better course of action for me is keep my eyes on Jesus and let everybody else do the same. That's, yeah. exact, that's great, great advice from Spurgeon yes. and from Jesus, right? Yeah. So the major takeaway, really, in this passage, but also from the entire Gospel of John, is MYOB. You must follow me. That's what we're taking away from the Gospel of John today. All right. Before we go, though, I want to check in on verse 23 and talk about that, and then we'll pray. Go ahead. 
Therefore this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but only if I want him to remain until I come, what is it that to you? All right. Okay, so John closes the gospel with an attempt to correct a misunderstanding of Jesus' words that he would not die. Right? This was also strengthened, this this rumor, this legend, this fable about John, about what Jesus said about John, it was strengthened several times because John was actually miraculously saved or miraculously provided for several times during his ministry. Right? You can read about that I think uh, in the uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, there's actually a whole chapter, <laughs> a whole couple of pages on the Apostle John. Really interesting how John survived. He survived imprisonment. He survived hot oil bath. He survived different things. And finally, he just threw him into the island of Patmos and let him uh, just kind of live out his days there. He was struck several times by miraculous events in John's life. Also, he was also the last living apostle. And so this also added to this tradition or fable. So so he wanted to straighten this out. That's not what Jesus said, right? To, this illustrates, though, just how often that we, the brethren, get, get it wrong. We misinterpret or mishear uh, what the words of Scripture are or what Jesus says, right? We willfully or ignorantly, we got to make sure that we're not misunderstanding what Scripture says and or the words of Jesus. we got to really intently listen to what Jesus is saying here. Uh, John said, right, John said this, ain't, this wasn't the case, it never was the case. That's not what Jesus said. But Jesus used hyperbole. He used an example. Look, if I want him to live forever, then that's my business with him. That's not my business with you. You, you follow me. That's really what Jesus said, right? And so that's what John was saying here. Ta I'll end with this. RVG Tasker in his uh, uh, commentary said this. Rumor had it that the Lord had prophesied that the beloved disciple would be alive when he came again. And the evangelist is anxious to make it perfectly clear that Jesus had only spoken hypothetically about such a possibility. Now, what I want you to know is rumor. Rumor is another way to distract disciples from the kingdom work. So just like Peter was distracted through competition and comparison, many are distracted through rumors about others. Do you see how rumors and gossip and, and talking about people behind their back also plays into exactly what Jesus talked to Peter about here. Look, quit worrying about what, what's happening with everybody else. You follow me. So the next time somebody comes in and talks to you about somebody else, say, hey, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you hear about so-and-so? You know what you tell them? You tell them, M-Y-O-B, you follow me. You tell them that's what Jesus said. Quit worrying about everybody else. And you follow Jesus. That's what we need to do. That's our response as we lean into the gospel work that God has called us to. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So let's not compare. Let's not compete. And let's not get caught up in the rumor mill about what's going on. I mean, you, I could just imagine. you, Peter and John, I can't wait to get with them in heaven and talk about their rivalry. I mean, they you could tell. There was some competition here between two of the, two of the big three, right? John, James, and Peter. John and Peter, they're mentioned a lot together. In scripture, right? John actually mentioned, remember a couple chapters back when they ran to the in last chapter in verse 20, they ran to the empty tomb. John was clear to say, Peter started, but I beat him there, right? I mean, I think that's hilarious. So this relationship between the two plays out until the very end of the gospel. Love, love uh, how this is doing. So anyway, you guys, I hope you guys have a great day in the Lord. We are uh, going to have a great day in the Lord here. And hopefully, hopefully we're going to be able to get on live here yeah. in just a minute. Okay, so y'all stay tuned. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for your love for us and how, Lord, you take care of us even when we can't get out of our own way. Lord, I pray that today we would help, you would help us not to compare, not to compete, and not to get caught up in the rumor reel and just get distracted from the mission that you've called us to. Father, thank you for this story. And thank you for restoring Peter three times, just like he denied you three times that he was restored three times. What an amazing picture of grace. But even in the midst of grace, Lord, Peter, he was still insecure and he was still trying to compare and compete. Lord, I pray that you take that out of us so that we chase after you. We keep our eyes on you. And yes, we mind our own business that we follow you. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to be in 1 John chapter 1 to 5. 
Look forward to seeing you there, and hopefully we'll see you in a minute as we go live here from the ship. Yes. All right. Yes. Hey, by the way, Stephanie, make sure you put the pictures of Mincy Christie from our trip to Jerusalem, from our trip to the Israel, uh, up so everybody can enjoy those too. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Oops.